let's talk about my preferences, what gets my juices flowing, what makes me tick. What I'm looking for and what I really like is a more of a balanced sound signature with a slight bass boost. Uh, I like my bass, but I like my bass tight, I like it fast, I like it to hit hard and have some slam. Uh, I do not like that extra big bass shelf boost that's sub bass driven uh, where the lower bass is scooped out. I think it's really important to have that information down there uh, to make instrumental like piano, guitar, cello sound correct. Uh, but also I like the bass fast enough, speedy enough to make kick drums sound great. When it comes to the rest of the mids, I prefer an overall maybe slightly warm tilt. Um, I'm not uh, a big fan of overly analytical, too dry a tuning. I'd rather have something a bit more musical. Uh, when we start to climb up into the ear gain region, make that pin again not so steep, uh, but give some energy to some body into the mids. Again, making vocals sound correct, making instrumentals sound correct. I'm a big fan of timbre and tonality when it comes to uh, instrumental as well. It has to sound correct to my ears. That 5k area also, I'm a bit sensitive to it. If there's too much information up there, uh, I get fatigue, I get uh, ringing in my ears, and it just doesn't let me play it longer and more importantly, louder because I do like my tunes louder. When it comes to the rest of the frequencies up top, I do like an extended treble, but not a peak above the uh, pin or rise. Uh, keep it extended, keep it uh, detailed, but don't put too much energy up there for treble sensitive people like myself. It's gotta have enough information to make great stage, to give instrument placement, uh, to make strings sound good, female vocals that aren't too thick. That's what really gets me going, uh, and that's what I'm looking for uh, sound preference wise.
Okay, next up, EPZ Q5 Pro, the newest version, the evolution of the Q5. Where's my Q5? There they are. Single dynamic carbon nanotube driver. Uh, this one got a lot of interest in the fact that it also looked like uh, the Advar, which was $900. This was $55, as is the new one, the Q5 Pro. Uh, same thing, single dynamic driver. This one is on a um, few cable, just so you know. I have no idea what happened to the original cable. Same as the Q5 Pro, it is on a mm, uh, nice HCK um, Black Soul clone cable. This one's the black version, super pretty, little bit different uh, design. Um, I like the black as well. Comes in black, it comes in that white. The stock cable, aesthetically wise, very, very thin, but they've done everything well. I mean, the matching color. So what comes with it, quite nice. Um, nice little case no real big complaints there i did put them both on upgraded cables and i listened to it off a very neutral sounding dap which would be my ibasso dx 180 that's my go-to dap for uh for neutral clean sounding very uh very resolving little dac so, talking about sound, um, well, it's a well-balanced tuning uh, with a slightly more energetic top end than the original. What really changed? Um, well, the driver. The, this is now second generation, uh, what do they call it? Carbon nanodynamic CNT driver. Um, I find the mids on this set are very uncolored, uh, not recessed, not warm, not too dry, not pushed out front and, you know, not recessed. So overall, very nice. I would consider this an IM as a, just like the original, because uh, a neutral with a bright top end, brighter top end. Um, lots of details and sparkle off the top end. I don't think it's treble head uh, region because it works for me. And I'm definitely not a treble head. Um, just has lots of detail up top and sounds quite nice. The biggest change is that driver and what happens with that driver with the original. And this is the question that everyone's going to ask is, uh, is it an upgrade? I think it's an evolution. I think it is. To answer that as a plain answer, yes. Um, but it's an evolution with a more natural sounding. That's the biggest difference between the Q5 Pro and the Q5. It's a more natural sounding driver. It has a touch more resolution. It has a touch more texture uh, to the overall presence of the mid-range uh, over the Q5. Uh, the In the base department, the Q5 has this driver is a little bit slower um, it has a little bit more weight to it, but the new driver is a little bit quicker, has more texture, brings out a little bit more nuances in the bass. It just sounds more natural, uh, especially for vocals and instrumental. Um, there is a little bit more energy in the upper mid uh, vocals, um, but that actually adds to a more natural uh tonality of female vocals and male vocals again had a little bit more huskiness a little bit more weight and body to them uh, and again as instrumental like guitars and cello it just had a, a refined uh, sound and it was it was a nice upgrade to hear from the q5 which i did like very much as well uh, it gives you a little bit more sparkly details up top over the original and the staging had a little bit more width uh, to the stage as well. So, and a couple metrics, uh, but really the big one over the original was the more natural sounding driver. The better driver leads to better quality. And that was the 
overall conclusion that I came up with from the Q5 to the Q5 Pro. So again, an evolution over the Q5, uh, wonderful tuning. If you love the Q5, you'll love the Q5 Pro. Um, it's just a, a, a better Q5. Thanks so much.